All right, in this lesson, we're going to talk about cholesterol. So the normal value for cholesterol is going to be less than 200 milligrams per deciliter. And uh, similar to other screening tests that we're going to look for indication for risks of disease. So we're looking for uh, using this test as a risk for disease for a heart attack, uh, heart disease, and uh, stroke. So the automatic response should not be that cholesterol is bad. Cholesterol is a good thing. Uh, it's made in the liver and it has a couple of functions. So it's responsible for cell membrane formation. It's also a precursor to vitamin D and it's also involved in hormone production. Now, the important thing about uh, the, um, the cholesterol is it's made of these uh, subunits called lipoproteins, and you have two of them. You have HDL, high-density lipoprotein, and you've got LDL, which is low-density lipoprotein. The goal with these is you want to keep the HDL greater than 60 milligrams per deciliter. These are goals for your patient. And LDL in general is you want to keep that less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. So why do we keep one high and one, when, why do we want to keep one low? So with HDL, it actually binds to the bad uh, fat deposits and eliminates them or helps to get rid of them. With uh, LDL, it's actually going to be a direct contributor to this, to this uh, lipid buildup or this these plaque buildups inside the vessels. So if we keep that low, that's going to keep this from occurring and if we keep this high, it's going to help bind to these bad um, fat deposits that's going to kick them out. So again, these uh, this LDL is going to be directly contributed to your lipid, your lipid buildup. So the important, the other important thing about cholesterol is we want to keep the cholesterol value to a minimum because it's going to contribute to diseases like um, atherosclerosis and um, arteriosclerosis. And with these, so you, this, uh, you have one that's the hardening of the, of the vessels themselves, um, and that's going to keep them from being less flexible. And then you're going to have this, the, uh, the, con the contribution of these fat deposits into the cells. And this, cause this is going to impede the blood flow. It's going to drop your O2. It's going to, it's going to contribute to your diseases like strokes and heart attacks because what happens is you have this decrease of blood flow and you've got a decrease of that O2 and it's going to cause some, uh, some tissue damage. So that's why it's really important that we use this test as a as an indicator for uh, risk for disease. And it's also a way to evaluate progress when you uh, when you're monitoring your patients moving forward. There are really a few consp uh, special considerations that we want to take a look at when we are uh, submitting this lab test. The first is it goes in a green top tube. So it's the one with heparin in it. And that's just going to keep that uh, that sample from clotting, it's typically uh, an in-house test. It's going to be, um, and when I say in-house, that's one that your your facility is going to be able to do um, within its own lab. It's not one that's special that we have to have it sent out. The other one is that, the other important part of it is that is a fasting blood test. I mean, your patients need to fast. So food is a direct contributor to uh, blood cholesterol when you're doing this test. So if they've eaten, it's actually going to increase their baseline cholesterol. It's going to give us an inaccurate representation of what's really going on with your patient. So make sure that with this test in particular, you want to make sure that they're fasting. So what should you think about whenever you see an elevated blood uh, blood cholesterol? Well, these you're going to see this in patients that um, are... Um, overweight or obese. They uh, may have things like Cushing's disease or uh, hypothyroidism. Uh, they could have some sort of level of heart disease. The other one you're going to see is in liver disease, especially one called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You'll see an increase there or if they have some malabsorption issues. Now, the main treatment for patients that have elevated cholesterol, you're going to start off with diet and exercise. These are simple modifications that the patient can do at home. Um, they're usually non-invasive. This, we're going to aim for a low-fat diet. And for exercise, we're going to do things that are tolerable for the patient, but also increase and improve cardiovascular function. And that's going to really help bring that cholesterol down. Statins, so things like a torvastatin or Lipitor, those are going to be uh, kind of a case-by-case -case scenario, but they also are usually something that the doctor is or the provider is not going to initially jump to doing uh, just because diet and exercise are things that the patient has uh, control of. But again, these are case by case basis. With your decreased cholesterol, you're going to see these in things like burns, hyperthyroidism, uh, different types of leukemia. Also, if your patient has some sort of malnutrition issues, so they have like an overall malnutrition, um, so think access to healthy foods. The other one is if they have some sort of condition like anorexia. So for today's nursing concepts, when we're looking at cholesterol, we're looking at our lab values and also paying attention to our patient's nutrition status. Okay, so let's recap.
Your normal values for cholesterol are going to be less than 200 milligrams per deciliter. This test is an indicator for risk of disease, future risk, and current risk. Uh, so these are going to be things like heart attack, heart disease, or even stroke. They are made up of these subunits called lipoprotein. So you have your HDL, your high-density lipoprotein, and you want to keep that one elevated. And your LDL, which is your low-density lipoprotein, you want to keep that one decreased. You're going to see elevated values in patients that are obese. Uh, they may have diabetes, some sort of liver disease, or a malabsorption problem. You're going to see decreased values in patients with burns, hyperthyroidism, and uh, conditions like anorexia. So that's our lesson on cholesterol. Make sure you check out all the resources attached to this lesson. Now go out and be your best selves today, and as always, happy nursing.